With Mortal Kombat, Midway Games had a major hit on their hands. This fighting game stood tall amongst its competitors through its terrific graphics, its gory finishing moves, its mythical storytelling and a marketing campaign that helped spread rumours and secrets about the game like wildfire through the arcades and out onto the streets. With such success, it would be insane not to capitalise on this with a sequel, and so the team at Midway, helmed by Ed Boon and John Tobias, was back. This is Mortal Kombat 2. It took just one year for Mortal Kombat to come thundering back into arcades for another round. Mortal Kombat 2 released in arcades in 1993, and Acclaim Entertainment once again published the later console ports. The game is once more a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, this time having expanded movesets, a larger character roster, and expanded mythos to the story. Mortal Kombat now featured 12 playable characters, all once again unlocked from the start. They have improved resolutions and brand new costume designs for the returning cast, which will become their most iconic attires in all of the Mortal Kombat franchise. Each character also came with more special moves, and whilst the combat controlled using the same 5 buttons and continued to follow the same rules as the previous game, it still improved in almost every area. Reduced recovery times makes the fighting flow much faster and allows you to perform combos at a noticeably increased speed. All of the characters now featured more than one fatality, and there were some epic ones here, like Liu Kang transforming into a dragon and biting the top half of his opponent, Kung Lao using his razor sharp hat to slice down his opponent clean in half. Reptile taking off his mask for the first time to reveal his reptilian form and then eating his opponent's head, Shang Tsung's stealing of his opponent's soul until they're a lifeless husk, Katana's fatal kiss that sees her opponent bloat up and explode, and Jax ripping his opponent's arms off. In addition to the abundance of fatalities, there were some newer, non-fatal finishing moves, which was the team's way of poking fun at the controversy Mortal Kombat was growing at the time. The babality saw your opponent turn into a crying baby, and the friendship saw the two characters interact without malicious intent, usually giving them a gift or having a little dance. This really expressed how Mortal Kombat never took itself too seriously. There were also stage specific fatalities that were a way of midway building upon the pit stage from the original in which you could uppercut your opponent off the stage into the spikes below. In Mortal Kombat 2, more stages feature these death traps, with the new pit stage having the camera perspective change when your opponent falls to their bloody demise. Other new ones included the pool of acid on the stage Deadpool and the ceiling of spikes on the stage Combat Tomb. In Mortal Kombat 2, Arcade and 2 player versus are the only two modes much like in the first. Arcade mode this time around drops the Test Your Might minigame and the Endurance rounds. You'll start at the bottom of the tower and work your way up, battling the rest of the game's larger roster, then face the triple threat boss gauntlet of Shang Tsung, new sub-boss Kintaro, another forearm monster, this time with tiger skin and claws, and new final antagonist, Shao Kahn. Mortal Kombat 2 begins straight after the original game, with Shang Tsung on his knees grovelling before his master, and the Emperor of Realm of Outworld, Shao Kahn. Shang Tsung pleads for his life, luckily he comes up with a new plan, a plan to hold the next Mortal Kombat tournament in Outworld, to which the Earthrealm warriors will have to leave their homeworld and enter Shao Kahn's territory, giving him the home field advantage. Shao Kahn agrees to this plan and restores Shang Tsung's youth and martial arts prowess so he can fight alongside his master. Shao Kahn sends his warlord and army to the Shaolin temples in Earthrealm and slaughters all of the monks living there, this acting as the invitation to the tournament. Raiden gathers the greatest warriors that Earthrealm has to offer and they venture into Outworld for the second Mortal Kombat. 
The art style of MK2 is completely different this time, due to it being set in this new realm of Outworld. It was significantly more darker and vibrant, having deeper colours than before, and the use of features like parallax scrolling gave these settings a more visually mesmerising look. For the 12 playable characters, 5 return from the first game. The previous game's champion, Liu Kang, returns, with Shao Kahn, Emperor of Outworld, having attacked the Shaolin temples which Liu Kang called home. This is what drives him to journey into Outworld along with the other Earthrealm fighters and participate in this new Mortal Kombat. Liu Kang is joined by Johnny Cage, who he befriended in the first tournament. Sub-Zero returns, having been presumed killed by the hands of Scorpion in the previous tournament. However, in his ending, it is revealed that this is the younger brother of the previous Sub-Zero, and that their clan, the Lin Kuei, sent him to finish his brother's task of assassinating Shang Tsung. Scorpion comes back, having learned of Sub-Zero's reappearance, and thus follows him into Outworld, joining the new tournament, with his only goal being to kill this new Sub-Zero. However, in Scorpion's arcade ending, it is revealed that Scorpion learns this is not the same Sub-Zero, and so he lets him live. Having learnt it's the other Sub-Zero's younger brother, Scorpion vows to protect the new Sub-Zero to atone for murdering his brother. And lastly, Raiden returns to fight for Earthrealm's freedom and defend it from Shao Kahn's wrath. And for new playable characters, there were Kung Lao, played by Anthony Marquez. Kung Lao is not the same Kung Lao mentioned as having been defeated by Goro in Mortal Kombat 500 years before the first game, but rather this Kung Lao is the descendant of his. He is also a close friend to Liu Kang, and joins him in this second tournament to not only avenge his great ancestor, but also bring an end to Shao Kahn's reign of terror. Reptile, the green palette swap of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, returns as a fully playable character with his own moveset. Reptile is mentioned as having been the bodyguard to Shang Tsung, a reptilian mutant humanoid that can disguise as a ninja. He fights on the side of Outworld. Shang Tsung, now played by Philip An, also returns as a fully playable character, is a lot younger with his youth having been restored, and as such features a great moveset of his own. Incredibly, Midway also returned Shang Tsung's ability to transform into other fighters, allowing you to become any of the other characters on the roster and utilise their moves, which makes him a high skill, high reward character. Kitana, played by Catalin Zamyar, is a female assassin and follower of Shao Kahn, who has been suspected of aiding Earthrealm. She is the original female ninja and wields her unique fan blades. In Katana's ending, we find out her real parents were once rulers of Outworld, but were overthrown by Shao Kahn. Jax Briggs, played by John Parrish. Jax is another member of the US Special Forces who enters the tournament to rescue his partner, Sonya Blade. Melina, a palette swap character of Katana. Melina is the twin sister to Katana and another personal assassin of Shao Kahn's. She is ordered to keep a close eye on Katana and watch for her sister's suspected betrayal. In Melina's ending, we discover that she is not actually Katana's twin sister, but rather her clone, created by Shang Tsung and using the mutant DNA of Baraka's race, which gives Melina razor sharp teeth. And Baraka, played by Richard DeVizio, who played Kano in the previous game. Baraka is the warlord of Shao Kahn's forces, a mutant with giant claws and razor sharp teeth. He was responsible for the attack on the Shaolin monasteries on the orders of Shao Kahn. The new POS characters this time around consist of Kintaro and then Shao Kahn, played by Brian Glynn and voiced by Steve Ritchie. Shao Kahn spawned from the same creative idea that George Lucas had with Star Wars. The big bad of the first film was Darth Vader, but there was still this mystery behind who did Vader serve. And in the sequel, The Empire Strikes Back, we learn about the Emperor, the true antagonist. Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn very much represented this idea. The only two characters that didn't return were Kano and Sonya Blade. 
This was due to time constraints and memory limitations that caused the team to cut at least two of the original game's characters, and these two were deemed the least popular at the time. They do still show up in the game however as Shao Kahn's prisoners, seen chained and on display in the background of the Colosseum stage. Midway still use digitised actors to create their characters, now working with whole new costumes and a higher quality Sony camera. Kintaro was also created, much like Goro in the first game, from a clay miniature and recorded using stop motion animation, and still looks fantastic. The music was again all recorded and performed by Dan Forden, the team's composer and sound designer. A little easter egg was added to the game in which if you connected a strong uppercut to your opponent, the face of Dan Forden would appear in the bottom corner of the screen shouting, Toasty! As for other easter eggs and secrets, the popularity of Reptile's secret appearance in the first game heavily influenced Midway to add even more secret characters to this sequel. There was Jade, a green palette swap of Kitana, Smoke, a grey palette swap of Scorpion and Sub-Zero who had smoke effects emitting from himself, and if you won 50 consecutive matches in a row, you could face Noob Cybot, a completely void black ninja character, whose name derives from the creator's surnames spelled backwards, Boone and Tobias. But even these weren't enough to satisfy the Mortal Kombat audience. On the pit stage, there can be seen two small sprites fighting on another platform far away in the background. They are both actually just altered versions of Liu Kang's sprite, made to look like more characters participated in this tournament. One had green pants, and the other was a character engulfed in flames. These became labelled Hornbuckle and Torch respectively by the Mortal Kombat community. There was also a very rare glitch that could turn Katana's sprite red, and this was also became the origins of another hoax character that the community would call Scarlet. However, as Midway enjoyed these fan speculations, two of these three characters would eventually become official players on the Mortal Kombat roster. The canonical ending to the game saw Liu Kang once again win the Mortal Kombat tournament, defeating the combined might of Kintaro and Shao Kahn. Earthrealm is saved once again and Liu Kang returns to his Shaolin temples to respect his fallen brothers. Acclaim Entertainment, who handled the home releases, had another successful marketing campaign costing 10 million US dollars. It carried the new tagline, Nothing, nothing can prepare you, and consisted of a live action commercial that starred the same actors that portrayed the characters from the game. The Genesis, Super Nintendo, Game Gear and Game Boy versions were released on September 13th, 1994, dubbed Mortal Tuesday by the marketing. The Genesis port of the game featured all the blood and fatalities without requiring a cheat code to unlock them. It also featured exclusive easter eggs and victory animations, one of which was a brand new finishing move for Raiden that has never seen a reappearance anywhere else. Called the Fergality, you could only get this from playing as Raiden on the armory stage. Once the code is input, your opponent will transform into a big head version of Fergus McGovern, who was a late employee that worked on this port of the game. The Super Nintendo version is again the closest arcade to home conversion out of the initial four MK2 ports, even being praised by the game's creator John Tobias. Because of the lower sales of the original Mortal Kombat port on the Super Nintendo, MK2 now also comes with blood and fatalities much like the Genesis version. Nintendo just made sure to stick a warning label on the box to ensure parents it featured mature content. The Game Gear version is certainly watered down from the Genesis version, it only features 8 of the initial 12 playable characters, lacking Johnny Cage, Raiden, Baraka and Kung Lao. And the Game Boy version isn't much more than what you'd expect after seeing the first game on this old handheld. It's definitely an improvement over the original port, with having less lag and input delay, but it's still not too appealing. It only features 8 of the 12 playable characters, like the Game Gear version, and it also doesn't feature the sub-boss Kintaro, and each character only has one fatality and the babality. 
Other versions that released later included ones for the Sega Master System, Sega 32X, Sega Saturn, and there was a PlayStation version, subtitled Ultimate God Fist, which only saw release in Japan. In 2011, Warner Brothers Interactive released the Mortal Kombat Arcade Collection for digital store on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC. It featured a remastered arcade port of Mortal Kombat 2, alongside the original and the Ultimate Edition of Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 2 was a commercial and critical success, upon receiving many awards and topping multiple top lists in the following decades, it also has had the greatest influence on the series and the fighting game genre as a whole. It's been ranked in multiple top 100 games of all time lists, it was America's highest selling arcade game in 1994, it went on to sell 27,000 arcade units and grossed over $600 million from arcade sales alone. In the first week of the console versions being on sale, Mortal Kombat 2 grossed $50 million, which was the biggest video game launch at that point, with Mortal Kombat 2 becoming the best selling video game of all time, until it was topped by Donkey Kong Country. It received overwhelming praise from critics and magazines, who praised the game's graphics, violence and addicting action, and it certainly is one of the most legendary 2D fighting games of all time. Friendship. Friendship? 